Okay, hey everybody, welcome back for another Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 video. Uh, my name is Matt, and uh, today I'm pretty excited to uh, be bringing you this video because I just made a uh, update to my rig that I have here, my simulator, uh, that I've been waiting for for a long time, and uh, it's been something that I've been waiting on a Sobo for, and uh, come to find out, we have some... Uh, software developers in the community and some tech savvy people that uh, came up with a workaround uh, in the meantime and this workaround uh, I've been testing it out for the past uh, couple hours spent some time this afternoon trying to implement it did a little bit of troubleshooting figured out what was going on and now it's all working and it works flawless flawlessly so uh, I just want to give out a big thank you to uh, the developer of this and I want to talk uh, through some of the history and uh, what specifically uh, I'm talking about here so uh, on this forum for Microsoft Flight Simulator pop-out panel manager version 3.4 uh, this dates back to October 2021 where uh, this developer Roast GNU he uh, he put together a uh, application that automatically sizes up the uh, pop-out panels to fit in uh, for so for for instance me I have my two touch screen panels here uh, so I could pop out those panels and he created an application that automatically pops out the panels and then sizes them up so that I don't have to be fiddling around with stretching the screens to to fit inside of my panels it's just one button click and everything automatically fits itself into the specified locations uh, so I had been using Fancy Zones for for those of you who have been have seen my previous video, and uh, Fancy Zones was working just fine for me. So when I initially stumbled upon this, it didn't look like something that I really needed. Uh, so I passed on on it at, at the time, and now apparently in uh, on June twelfth uh, of this year, he posts he posted, and I won't read it all to you. I'll just go over some of the highlights. But he says I'm currently prototyping a new feature to allow pop-out panels to be touch enabled on your touch monitor or your tablet. Uh, so he says his prototype seems to be working, and he's kind of trying to pull the interest from uh, people on the panel. So he, he says he understands his limitations. He talks about some of those limitations. He talks about some of the Microsoft bugs that are there right now. Uh, so as you scroll forward, so today is the 30th. So it's been two or three weeks since he posted this. Uh, so I'm just going to scroll through some of the chatter and uh, make my way down to where I started chiming in. So uh, somebody else, Crunchmeister here. I've I've worked with him in the past through these forums. He's helped me out quite a bit as well. He says, unfortunately, your wonderful efforts for touchscreen support have been broken by Sim Update 10. So you can tell that this guy, uh, GNU, who has been working on this application, you can tell every time the Sim uh, Asobo comes out with a new update, he goes back in. He continues to support his application and uh, gets it back up and running, patches whatever issues were, were, were created by Asobo, and gets it working for everybody again. So he's, he's really been supporting it like crazy. And uh, from what I saw, so from, from the day that I first posted in this forum, uh, he responded that day, and when I had issues today trying to install it, uh, he responded again Im immediately like in a matter of a, an hour or two I had a response from him with some steps that he recommended that I follow to, fo uh, to tr troubleshoot further uh, I'm just gonna continue going down okay so so I posted yesterday when I found that uh, he was working on touch support as soon as I found that I was instantly interested because uh, I've been, it's been bugging me for a long time that I have these touch screens and in terms of, uh, so I have Air Manager and I have the Knobster and uh, it's, it, that all works great in terms of being, having a fully touch cockpit. What bugs me is when I pop out the, the panels, something like a G3X, which happens to be the go-to instrument panel in a lot of like the uh, small two-seater experimental and light sport aircraft that I'm flying in the simulator those don't actually those are touch screen panels in real life and in the simulator 
Asobo never got around to working on the, the touch capability of those. So I can use my touch screens for everything except for controlling those touch screen panels, which makes no sense at all. So we're really waiting on Asobo to come out with a fix. But in the meantime, because uh, it could be years before Asobo comes out with a fix, just like it was two full years before they came out with true multi-monitor support. So I'm not holding my breath there. In the meantime, Roast GNU has been just a, a, a savior for people that have home cockpits like me that want this uh, capability. So I essentially said after some time away, some update 10 and true uh, multi-monitor functionality rekindled my interest. So I thanked him for working on what he's been working on, told him I'm mainly here for the touch support of the G3X, uh, and then I appreciate his, his efforts. Um, I, and then I said probably out of the scope, but I figured I'd ask the question anyways. So aside from the G3X lacking touch functionality, it also bugs me that I lose the ability to actuate the G3X menu buttons. Uh, so I asked if he had any ideas, not trying to take the thread in a different direction, but I figured people that are interested in this thread for the touch functionality probably also care about having a working menu button uh, and knobs for the uh, for the G3X panel because th there's no uh, bezel for it in Air Manager. So immediately, uh, I think a couple hours later, um, I had a response from Crunchmeister. And again, I've, I've said I've had help from him in the past. He helped me get... Uh, so up in the top right hand corner of the screen so I have this uh, moving map app so he helped me get my moving map app working uh, so my moving map is on my phone and I couldn't figure out how to so this was a capability in, in pr prior uh, flight simulators but I couldn't figure it out in 2020 how to get my my simulator computer broadcasting its GPS location in, uh, in the simulator over my Wi-Fi network to my phone so that my phone would think I'm where I am in the sim. So Crunchmeister helped me figure that out. And uh, so if you're looking for him on, on YouTube, he's Autopilot, O-T-T-O Pilot. I'll just show you his page because, again, he's been super helpful. Uh, so this is Autopilot. So he's been super helpful, so check him out if you haven't yet. Um, so immediately he responds and he goes, you might want to look here. I just rolled this out like two minutes ago and it's a, uh, it, it's a bezel. He created a bezel for, uh, uh, for air manager. And you can see these in my, my bottom two monitors here. I, I implemented what he created there. Uh, so he said it was something quickly thrown together, uh, but he says it's 100% functional. He says the graphics are a bit meh. I mean, for me, graphics, you know, I, I just wanted the functionality. The, and to me, the graphics look good, too. So I think he's being hard on himself. But uh, so I said that was quick. You know, thank, thanks for uh, thanks for sending me that. Uh, he talks about he's put that together a while, a while back. Um, so then I... Uh, so this is uh, today after I had been spent some time troubleshooting and when I finally figured out what I was doing wrong. So I uh, quoted Crunchmeister further up in the thread, like like months ago in the thread, he was working on something else, a different problem. And, and I think he might have even deleted what his problem was when he when he figured out it was it was user error on his part. Um, but the comment I saw from him was never mind running the app in admin mode did it like administrative privileges. Um, so when I saw that, it occurred to me, oh, I haven't tried that yet. So, uh, you know, I, I spent maybe four hours trying to get this application to work, the, uh, the pop-out panel manager. And when I, I was super frustrated by this point, like just wondering what the heck is going on. And, you know, at that point you start losing faith that you're going to have a quick fix. So at this point I'm sending messages to Roast GNU asking him for some help. And when I saw this message from Crunchmeister, I went in and tried running the application in in admin mode this is the pop-up panel manager and as soon as I put it in admin mode it worked flawlessly so clearly you know it, there might be an issue there uh, Roast GNU ends up saying he's gonna go and note note that that's an, something that people need to do and he's gonna work on trying to find a fix for it but so I said just to make a note here for anyone trying to input spend a couple hours trying to troubleshoot uh, during the initial setup mode of the pop-up panels eventually I stumbled upon yeah so that's everything I just said so thanks again for creating the app, and thanks for Crunchmeister for the help and for the bezels. Uh, and then R Rose Jane, you steps in, and thanks Crunchmeister for helping me out, and uh, says that he's going to add 
going to be tracking the issue that it needs to run in uh, admin mode on, on Windows 10. So uh, all that said, um, this is the application. So if you go to flightsim.to, Microsoft Flight Simulator pop-out panel manager, 4.36 out of 5 stars. Um, if I scroll down, I know I saw it earlier when I was looking. Yeah, so it's been downloaded 836 times. Uh, my guess is a lot of people are looking for touch functionality like like I was looking for, and I think this is going to be the fix for a lot of people. So uh, he's on version 3.4. It seems to me that he updates it pretty frequently whenever people report uh, issues to him. So I would imagine that's going to continue being supported for a long time. He, he's been awesome. Uh... Okay, and that's uh, oh, so that's him re responding to me directly, uh, which which is awesome. Okay, so all of that said, um, today to test this application out, I figured we'd do a flight on the Pilot Edge network because my big issue with these touch screen with this touch screen's capability is whenever I try to fly on the Pilot Edge network, where I'm talking to real life controllers on on the network, uh, air traffic controllers. Things can get busy, especially when you're flying in the busy uh, Los Angeles airspace where uh, Pilot Edge is, you know, based out of. So you got Class Delta here, another Delta here. The, I'm, I'm going to be flying into a, another Delta. Um, this will be the general plan I'm going to follow. Oh, I don't know why it's doing that. But anyways, um, you know, things happen quick. You need to tune the frequencies quickly. You can't get behind behind the aircraft or, you know, you can get yourself into trouble flying, you know, and have to do circles while you get your aircraft situation figured out. Um, so when I was flying the simulator, you know, it's, it's busy enough as it is. And then when you have to use your mouse to tune the radios and you're scrolling in on things trying to figure out what the, f you know, how to tune the frequency, it's just like... It's it's a distraction, and you end up not not to mention whenever you take the mouse and mouse down to control those radios, the simulator all of a sudden thinks that uh, your active window is no longer the the flight simulator. It, s it sees your active window is now you know the radios. So since the active window is not the flight simulator, it ignores all of your uh, flight control inputs, so you can move the you can move the control stick all over the place, move the throttle, you know, try it, and and the simulator ignores all of it. So meanwhile, you're trying to tune your radios, your aircraft is getting all out of control, and it just it it causes you know a, a normal situation in real world flying to become mayhem in the simulator. So it really breaks the uh, uh, the immersion of of flying the sim. So. Uh, I just want to show you how well this application works, and uh, I want to send a big thanks again to uh, Roast GNU for for putting it together because it really uh, it's it's been awesome. I haven't used it yet on the Pilot Edge network, but uh, I'm going to do that with you guys, and we're going to do it live. So, uh, 13 minutes in, just to explain the story here. So, I'm on Pilot Edge. Uh, I already filed a flight plan. We check the weather, weather at Chino, and then we're flying to Long Beach. The weather is clear at both spots, so we're going to fly with live weather. Uh, and winds are variable here, uh, 280 at 9. So winds are from the west, so we can expect to use west-facing runways. Uh, we already briefed the, f the flight, so we're going to be taking off of this Delta here, uh, Chino. We're going to have to stay. Uh, so Chino's FBO. I looked up where their FBO is here on Google Maps. Uh, so it's right uh, right by the tower here. So we're going to, so it looks like parking areas here. So we're, we'll set ourselves up for parking here. They're probably going to have us take 26 right for takeoff to the west from there. Uh, we're going to be flying. We're going to want to stay under 2,700 feet so that we're staying under the Charlie shelf for Ontario. And then this way we're going to want to stay under 9,000, under 8,000, under 7,000. Uh, and we're going to want to avoid um, Fullerton Delta as well. That's why I was trying to bring this over here. Maybe I need to drop a GPS location. Yeah, add GPS location as well. 
Um, so we're staying under 4,000, and there's a 5,000 here, so that's going to get sketchy. Uh, I think we're just going to stay under 2,500 feet when we get there because we want to avoid the delta. The delta goes up to 25, so that's the way we're going to do it. Uh, so, f you know, around this point we're going to be tuning up ATIS. Maybe back here we'll be tuning up ATIS if we can get it. Get ourselves set up. We're going to start talking a tower, and we're assuming that they're going to have us, you know, landing to the west again. Uh, their runway is 2-6. Uh, so they'll either give us 2-6 right or left. Their FBO is located on the short runway here. Uh, this is their FBO website. So they're probably going to give us... 2-6 left here, and then the FBO is right here. So, that's the plan. Um, let's go ahead and fly it. So we don't need that, don't need that. And we're done with all that stuff. And I think we're even done with that. So let's launch Pilot Edge. I already filed the flight plan with Pilot Edge. We talked about that. Uh, I'm going to connect to the network. We're 935 Whiskey Tango. We are an RV-12, notionally, um, just because I fly in a flying club in the real world that's got an RV-12. So for the sake of practicing my call signs, I'm going to use an RV-12. In the simulator, we're going to be in the Sting S4 LSA, which is a uh, payware aircraft, uh, but I've, I've been enjoying it so far. So let's do that. Unable to connect. Oh, okay. So let's launch the simulator. I probably could have gotten that going because now we're going to have to wait for that. Uh, reason why I didn't get it going is because I wanted to show off um, this new application. So he has a mode with a checkbox where you can check that uh, it should launch itself, la the application, when you launch the simulator. I've been trying to check it. It seems like the checkbox keeps unchecking itself so I'm testing that now and we'll see if it checks itself if not I'll just launch the uh, application manually again with something like this like I'm I'm totally not some you know, a small little thing like that assuming that I'm correct here and, and that piece keeps you know unchecking itself um, you know that's a small 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 thing that I'm not super worried about it, uh, J the the big functionality that this brings to the sim is is so huge that yeah I'm not sweating the small stuff drinking my iced tea lemonade mix homemade Arnold Palmer okay we're gonna go to the world map we're gonna take off of KCNO and we're gonna go to KLG uh, LGB we'll leave that and we are uh, Let's go and find So we said is it not gonna let me zoom in much further? So we said parking was over here because the this is the FBO, this is the tower. So let's park right there. And then we said we want to ultimately get over here to GA parking. Uh, okay, we're going to go direct GPS. We got our aircraft set up with the correct call sign. Flight conditions, weather and time. So we want um, live weather and live time. And then I'm just going to go... And now, just a couple days ago, too, I implemented the multi-monitor support. So we'll be flying this thing, true multi-monitor as well.
So this application, if you notice, I did not use the mouse to click that ready to fly. This application also has little features that do stuff like that for you. It automatically clicks the ready to fly thing. So if uh, so, that's pretty cool. Uh, so I'm going to launch the panel manager here. You can see we're cold and dark on the runway. Hmm. Okay, so it crashed one time. Make sure all of my screens are maximized there. Okay. Uh, why is it so dark? I, I thought, uh, what time is it there right now? <laughs> that's that's pretty funny. What's well, Pacific time? I could probably do the math in my head. No, oh, it is nine o'clock, huh? Well, that's kind of a pain in the butt. You know what? It's VFR, so I know I already launched my flight plan, but how we get there wouldn't really change. I don't think I want to do a night flight right now. Confident we could get there alive, but uh, it's better. Okay. Uh, oh, we didn't connect yet. Uh, no, I'm not going to change the flight plan. All right, so let's connect. RV twelve. Connect. Okay, so we're connected and logged into the network. Uh, I want to tr turn down my sound options. That way uh, we're only hearing them and we're not hearing the simulator's sounds. I'm going to take one more peek at my OBS and make sure that everything I'm trying to broadcast is being broadcasted. I think we're ready to go. So, uh, going back to this. So, pop out panel manager. Interesting. That's twice in a row now that it did not launch properly. Oh, do I already have an instance of it up? might already have an instance up. Yeah. I launched. Alright, so let's try that one more time. So it's trying to connect to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Okay, so it's connected. It has our panel locations, which are that's something that we have to set during the initial setup mode when we're assigning our profile. That's what I couldn't get past. That's what I spent four hours troubleshooting today. Uh, these specific panels don't require power to be on the aircraft, so sitting here cold and dark, I should be able to hit start pop-out panel, and you're going to see it do its thing. So let's go ahead and do it. So it moves the camera around a little bit to get to a point where it can see all the panels you're trying to pop out, and then it pops them out, resizes them, and then sets it back to whatever you set as your custom view. So this is the view we want where we can see our two wings. We don't see our panel on the scenery screen because we have our panel in front of us here. So that's all stuff that we set, and it gets us all set to go, ready to go. So I'll show you some of the preferences you can work through here. So this is where like you can um, enable auto start application when Microsoft Flight Simulator starts. So I keep checking this and it seems like it keeps unchecking itself. But that might be user error. I don't know. I'll keep trying things. Um, so pop out settings. So you set your initial um, so control alt zero in the simulator. Um, I'll set that. So if I hit control out zero control out zero. No, it's because I have the preferences thing up. So in the simulator, control alt zero is how you assign a custom view. So 
when you're setting this up you you get yourself so that you can see your whole panel all the screens you want to pop out you set that as a custom view and then this thing automatically goes to that custom view when you run it it then assign it then grabs these monitors that you defined and then after it pops them out and places them it goes back to so it goes back to a predefined view so this is my control alt 1 so alt 1 is what it automatically clicks to bring me to this custom view here so that's pretty cool that's all done automatically um, auto pop out panels uh, one delivery is bound track IR so it automatically disables track IR so I should have track IR running right now I do so you can see it's tracking my face so that when I enable that in the simulator um, I the simulator will look where my head is looking but uh, for the sake of grabbing your panels and popping them out uh, you want to disable that so that this automatically disables that so let's get rid of this I might have messed myself up here. Okay, let's get rid of that. Okay, so we're back to this, preferences, uh, and then touch settings. So um, this you can set like a delay timer uh, for, it, it helps with the sensitivity of the touch screen. So I set mine to 75 just because I found by some trial and error that that works best for me. So those are the preferences I have. Uh, it already popped out our panel, so now we can minimize this. I'm gonna bring it over to this screen and minimize it. And now we're ready to uh, get ourselves started. So we're gonna try to touch things as infre infrequently as possible. Um, I think the only thing I need to do manually is my fuel knob. Other than that, I think we can do this flight mouse free. So let's give that a try. So master switches are coming on. I think we need to turn our avionics on just to get a panel to come on. Uh, we're not going to get our and so we're not going to be able to monitor our instruments and stuff during startup unless we turn those avionics on. So we'll do that. Turn our beacon on. Interesting, my beacon doesn't want to turn on. Strobes, let's try those, nav, landing light. Okay, now the beacon turns on, so maybe that's just a simulator thing. It might be one, one button to do both in this specific aircraft. So specific aircraft, it's got strobes, nav, landing light, so no beacon. The b beacon must be tied to the strobes. So uh, let's go back to Alt-1, our custom view. Uh, so we have our lights on. Uh, we can prime the fuel, so we'll uh, crack the throttle. We'll turn on the boost pump. Give it five seconds. Boost pump's coming off. Throttle's coming back to idle. And uh, we'll hit the brakes, and we'll turn the key. Uh, might need to choke it, we'll see. No choke required. Okay, I wish we had a parking brake, we don't. That's the sound of me letting go of the brakes, uh, just because it's a pain in the butt to hold them, so we'll see if we start rolling anyway. Okay, we can uh, turn the taxiway light on because we are going to be taxi. Oh, this aircraft doesn't have a taxi light, so never mind. Uh, and we can start setting ourselves up avionics wise. So we already have our flight plan in. So let's do a split screen here and we'll start backing ourselves up. So our flight plan from Chino. So this is already, you can touch, see the touch screen working. And then I can drag this over here. So Chino to Long Beach looks good there. Um, I think I can get rid of that for now. Uh, frequencies. So looking at my Chino uh, airport diagram here, we know we're going to need to uh, contact ground at 8. So ground is 121.6. So standby 
21.6. And we'll stick that in the Boy, primary for now. Three, and then three, ATIS three, is 125.85. Three, 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 left clear for the option for Victor Whiskey. Okay, so let's go get the ATIS. Whiskey. Zero, three, five, three, two, two, seven, zero, eight. Visibility one zero. One zero thousand scattered. Ceiling two zero thousand broken. Temperature two four. Two point one three. Altimeter two nine or nine or four. Arriving and departing runways two six left. Two six right. Visual approaches in use. Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact. You have information. Whiskey. Okay. Chino Airport. A we'll go through one more time for the winds. Zero three five three Zulu. Wind two seven zero at eight. Visibility one zero. One zero thousand scattered. Ceiling two zero thousand broken. Temperature two okay. four. Okay. Ceilings are up at ten thousand. So no issues there. We'll get ground in there. Let's get uh, tower in 118.5. So already you can see the touchscreen. I mean, this is just huge. <laughs> I can't explain enough how much of a pain in the butt it was and how frustrating it was to have to grab the mouse to use the panels. And when you grab the mouse to use the panels, the simulator stops paying attention to your flight control inputs. The aircraft gets out of control. It's just a huge pain in the butt. So I'm super excited that we got all this stuff figured out now. Um, I totally skipped over looking at my engine instruments. So we do have oil PSI, oil temperatures in the green, 14 uh, volts on the battery, so the alternator's charging it. Fuel quantity, 16 gallons. Uh, it's probably, I think the flight's 20 minutes or so. Let's see, what does this say? 16 minutes. So yeah, figured 20 minutes with takeoff and landing. So it's, we're only going to burn four gallons or so getting there. We should be landing with 12 to 10 gallons, which is plenty of reserve. So we're all good there. Uh, RPM is uh, we should be outside of the avoid range for an, for a uh, uh, for a Rotax engine, uh, and I'm trying to remember what that avoid range is. Usually it's placarded with the proper colors. I don't know if they did that right in this aircraft. I'm assuming they did. So let's say it's 1700 to 2000 or so. I'm going to call it good there. Um, okay, continuing forward. Uh, we can call uh, ground for a taxi clearance. And again, ground is 121.6. So we are sitting... Shoot, where are we sitting? Uh, let's Tower, Sierra, 704, Golf, Michael, we're going to put the runway two, five, navigation three, into... Clear for takeoff, runway 25704, Golf, Mike. Did my let's view stop working? Why did that stop working? Seems like Let's View started doing its own thing. I'm not entirely sure why. Actually, I'm also going to go to Do Not Disturb so that I don't get embarrassed while we're streaming. Okay, so we want to be listening in our Avair app, and we want to be broadcasting through XConnect. So there's our latitude and longitude information. Come on. Okay, so now you're looking at uh, my Avera app receiving the GPS location. And then in the bottom tab, I'm going to scroll all the way back over to the map. And now it sees us here on the ground at Chino. So that looks good. I can pull up the plate. It shows us there at parking. So we're just going to say we're at the base of the tower. Uh, taxi VFR with whiskey. And again, make sure our frequency is right here. Ground is 121.6. So let's make a call. 
Chino Ground Experimental RV935 Whiskey Tango. Experimental RV935 Whiskey Tango is at the base of the tower, uh, like to taxi VFR uh, for a uh, departure to the west with Whiskey. I don't know if I gave him all the information. Yeah, Okay, so taxi to runway 26 right via Alpha Papa, cross 21 at Alpha, 935 Whiskey Tango. Zero 704, golf mic, you're ready to contact, contact departure. Contact departure 704, Okay, mic, so radio. we're, so they said, so Alpha Papa. John Wayne Tower, Skyhawk 1522, Victor on Kilo, holding short of 20. This way? Departure. And they said cross to one at Alpha. So that looks good. It passes the does it smell right check. So I think we're ready to start moving. Coming forward. We're going to have to do a run up. So we should uh, take a look around before we get too far away. Nobody on the taxiway there. So maybe when we're out on the taxiway, we'll do our run up. I don't see a run up area on the. Uh, on the, the airport tiger rim, but then again, I didn't look very hard. So I think we're just going to point our tail out over the grass and do a run up. I don't know if that would pass the smell check in the real world. Whoa, sorry. But that's what we're going to do for right now. Okay, so we're going to hold the brakes. We're going to bring the engine RPMs up to 4,000. Four thousand. Okay, and we're going to do a mag check, so let's check the, uh, or lane check for electronic ignition. Drop it no more than 300 back to both, and then the left side, no more than 300 back to both. Looks good. Alternator looks good. Engine instruments are in the green t T's and P's, and the idle check. The engine doesn't cut out at on us at idle. So uh, we're calling that a good check. So we're going to continue forward. And again, we want to be on alpha. I keep doing that. I keep using. Okay, so there's alpha. So coming forward. can't tell if I'm on the taxiway or in parking. I'm in parking. Okay, so we're on Alpha. Nope, we're on Delta. So we need to turn around. Okay, I guess. Come on. We're really killing ourselves here. This looks like alpha. Cross 2 1. Okay, so this is where we're crossing the runway. She cleared us to cross 2 1 at alpha, so we're moving across. Crossing 2 1 at alpha. Verifying it again. So we don't get ourselves in trouble. We should probably be looking both ways as we do this, but we didn't.
Okay, coming out to 2.6 here. Whoa, that's how ground loops happen, even in a nose wheel. So we're holding short of 2.6 right. We're going to get ourselves set up for the takeoff so we can switch over to tower. Oops. Switch over to tower. Next person we're going to want to talk to after tower It's going to be SoCal Approach 135.4 maybe. She'll correct us otherwise. And then uh, we're going to go lights, camera, action. So all our lights are on verified camera. We're going to go to the transponder, squawk in 1200 in altitude mode. And then we can double check with pilot edge that our MOSC is on. It is. So camera's good and action. So we are uh, flaps up for the takeoff. We're trimmed for takeoff. Uh, fuel is done automatically by our uh, uh, ECU in this aircraft. Um, we do have fuel for the mission. And uh, other than that, I think we are ready to go. So I'm going to make a call to Chino Tower. Uh, 2-6, yeah. So we're going to be turning. So we're facing the south, turning right on to 2-6. Chino Tower, Experimental 935, Whiskey Tango, holding short of runway 26 right, uh, ready for takeoff. Uh, clear for takeoff, runway 26 right, 935, Whiskey Tango. It's tough to hear her. I'm just going to assume if this were the real world, I'd ask her to say again. But I'm going to assume that that was nothing uh, too crazy important. So we're verifying via our little map here. We're verifying via the numbers on the runway. 26 right it is. Okay. And power is coming up full forward. Getting the weight off the nose wheel. Get the nose wheel flying. Airspeed's alive, 55, and rotate at 55. So we're off. We're heading 26. We want to climb out at 75. Switch over to our map view, and we want to stay under 2,700 feet. Good rate of climb going. Keep that going. RPM's in the yellow, so I'll get that back into the green. I did not thoroughly look at this chart to see if we're crossing any mountains. I don't believe we are. It doesn't look like it but I have been caught by that before flying in this area. I'm just gonna maintain my 260 heading until I'm told differently. That might have been something she told me. I'm going to hold the 2,500 feet right there so we're not busting the Charlie. Alright, let's get our map up. Zoom in a bit. Looking good there. 
She hasn't switched us over. I don't know if she's busy doing other things. Or if she just is going to hand us over to VFR and just knows that we don't want to talk to uh, SoCal. Either way is fine. Oops, we want to stay below 27. Cruise flight. See if we can cruise at 120. So much for 260 heading. Okay, we're clear of the Charlie. I could fly this with the autopilot, but... I like getting the practice. That's what we're in the simulator for. So we did not add our little uh, dog leg into our flight plan here. We could do that, but that seems like a little bit of a distraction. I think we're just going to ignore it. We'll follow our moving map. OBS still looks good. 18 frames per second. That's so okay. For all the stuff we're running here, that seems to be about normal. We're on uh, graphic settings high. When I'm streaming, it's about 20. When I'm not streaming, it's about 23, 24, 25, maybe. Calling that. Of course, I'd, I'd love to have more, but uh, I don't think I don't think we're going to get any better than that at this moment. We're still CPU limited, limited by main thread there. If I wanted to, I could get ourselves distracted. I just took a quick peep, peek at the map to make sure that we're uh, not busting any airspace. We're looking good. So 35% on the CPU, you can see that main thread is... Uh, tearing it up 14 15 on the memory and then our GPU still has 25 percent of headroom because the CPU's not feeding it enough so it's sitting there waiting on the CPU so hopefully DirectX 12 when that gets figured out gives us better uh, multi-thread support so that I can get my CPU utilization higher bring that main thread down so that my GPU is up at a uh, hundred percent rather than 75% because I'll bet you that if we're sitting here flying at at 18 frames per second I'll bet you that extra 25% uh, if we had it available to us would allow us to turn ultra settings on as opposed to just high And we can climb, so we're out of the Charlie now, so we could climb up. Let's do 3,500 feet, just for a little bit of margin of safety, because we're in a populated area here. So we know we're making a dog leg. Uh, so that airport directly ahead of us. Probably Compton, maybe, uh, I don't think it's Fullerton. So I think that close one right there, I think this is Fullerton, I think this is Long Beach. But we got a dog leg around Fullerton to get to Long Beach. I know I said we weren't going to touch the mouse, and I just touched it, but that was for pointing only, so it doesn't count. 
Uh, we want to make sure we're not busting the uh, delta. We're pretty close. F Fullerton's delta, we're right on the edge of it. So I'm just going to turn away from it just a little bit. We want to hold that 250 heading. So I'm actually going to get rid of this map page because it's really not doing much for us. And I'm going to turn our coarse needle. Whoa. <laughs> That's, I'm going to turn the coarse needle, not the key. Uh, course needle doesn't. I need my heading bug. How about that? To two five. Really? There we go. Heading bug to two five zero. So that right there is uh, Crunchmeister hooking us up with his bezels right there. We could check out Crunchmeister stuff. We got the nearest page. We can go back. We got the direct to page that works. We can go back. We can go to the home page. We can check out the map page. We go from home. We could check out the active flight plan. Uh, we can scroll down to see Long Beach is where we're going. Go back. 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 Maybe not. Back to home. Uh, we could check out procedures. We're not going to do any instrument procedures. Uh, we can change our comm frequencies. We can go to the setup page, display, main menu. Uh, but I think we're going to start focusing on the flight here now that we're getting close. So uh, we know we need to tune up ATIS at Long Beach. ATIS is 12775. This is where stuff starts getting busy. 12775. And notice as we're touching that, I'm able to use the flight controls. Standby. So now it ignores the flight controls for one second, while, uh, but it only ignores it for one second because he's got it programmed in that if I don't touch buttons, so it ignores it, and then one second later, if I don't touch buttons for one full second, I, or it might be 50 milliseconds or 500 milliseconds, regard, whatever he's got it programmed to, GNU, uh, it automatically brings the mouse cursor back to the main screen so that it quickly starts paying attention to your flight controls again. So that's huge. Let's not bust. 4,000, because that would be the Bravo. So we're going to stay at 3,500. And we're going to get that contact in there. Information, Fox Trot. Long Beach Airport, ATIS Information, Fox Trot. 0353 Zulu. Wind 110 at 4. Visibility 10. Sky condition, clear. Temperature 22. Dew point 18. Altimeter 29 or 9 or 4. Arriving and departing runways 26 left, 26 right, 30. Visual approaches in use. Read back all runway assignment and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact that you have information, Foxtrot. Foxtrot. Okay. Airport, we're done with that, and we're going to want to talk to Tower on 119.4. One, one, one one nineteen four, and then after that we're going to want to talk to ground make sure we're uh, not screwing ourselves here yep so we're looking good we're just buying ourselves some time working our way to that dog leg point uh, and we want to hold 3000 so see how I'm tuning in the radio here but but I'm still able to control. If we were using the mouse there, I would have gotten stuck on the radio page and we would have aircraft would have been getting out of control there. So I still want my page up there so I can type in the next frequency, but as I have that page up, I can still be trimming the aircraft out to hold level flight, which it's not doing a very good job at. So I'm going to give it some power so that we can hold level. And ground frequency uh, is 133 zero that's in there in the standby okay so let's start uh, our turn and we're gonna or we'll give it a second and then we'll start our turn we'll call uh, tower and let him know that we are inbound I didn't see any approach to call so we're just gonna call tower uh, we are currently seven miles uh, eight miles 
to the northeast, inbound for landing with Fox. Inbound for the FBO. Long Beach Tower, experimental 935 Whiskey Tango, 8 miles to the northeast, uh, inbound for the General Aviation FBO with Foxtrot. We do have 119.4 in there. Oh, we need to be under the 2500. We're already breaking the Bravo right there. So that's that's a no-go. Long Beach Tower, uh, Experimental 935 Whiskey Tango is 8 miles northeast of the airport uh, with Foxtrot inbound for landing uh, and the FBO. Wow. Yeah, 935, we're keeping up procedure at the uh, northeast FBO. And I report two miles north of the field. Uh, my apologies. Say again for 935 Whiskey Tango. 935 Whiskey Tango. Proceed direct the northeast ramp. Report two miles north of the airport. Uh, we'll proceed to the northeast ramp. Uh, we're still looking for a runway, though. Uh, you, you, you were a helicopter there. Um, join the right base for like 26 right, report established right. 26 right. Uh, we'll report established, uh, cleared to land 26 uh, right, uh, 935 Whiskey Tango. No clearance was issued, just a report, established, final. Uh, understood. No clearance issued. Report established final 26 right. Just to confirm, we're an experimental light sport aircraft, RV-12. All right. Well, I'm broadcasting how rusty I am and uh, why I generally, in the real world, steer clear of uh, class Bravo airspace because we made a mistake here. We busted the Bravo. We got busy. Uh, yeah, not good. You want to try to avoid that stuff. So we're coming in. We want to get ourselves established on 2-6 right. Uh, I'm surprised she didn't give us 2-6 left, considering we're going. So northeast ramp is where she's sending us. So that's why she gave us 2-6 right. All right. So we want to have our eyes out for the runway. Thinking it might be over there now. This is why I didn't want to do this at night, but here we are. All right, so we got our speed down a little bit. Um, we still got three miles to go. I guess we could bump the speed up. <laughs> that so this is why Pilot Edge is such a great tool to train with, though. As you could tell, the uh, controller there getting a little frustrated with me as I'm telling her I can't hear what she's saying. Granted, I'm going to blame a little bit of that on the simulator because I think uh, in the real world I'm going to hear her coming through the radio a little bit more clearly. But, you know, it, it adds that much li that little bit much more stress that uh, makes you really have to pay attention. And when you're focusing real hard trying to listen to what the controller is saying, you can you know miss other things like not busting the Class B when the shelf steps down from 4,000 to 2,500. So... Awesome things to practice. Those are mistakes. Little land two six right nine three five whiskey tango. Okay, we're looking over there. That looks like an airport. I see all the blue taxi lights. We're gonna make sure we're shooting our approach for two six right, not confusing it with two six left. Airport at, uh, altitude is 60 feet or 100 feet, uh, close enough. So 
uh, pattern altitude is going to be 1,000. I see the first runway there, so I'm going to call that 26 right. So we'll start making our way in. Speed looks good, we're way high. So I'm going to do a notch of flaps. I'm going to go full flaps. Let's get this power back. Get that rate of descent up. Confirmed, we're coming in 2-6 right. We're looking good here. She said the FBO is just off to the, to the right. She said northeast ramp. Five hundred feet. We're still above glide slope, so even though it's dark, we know we're safe. Confirmed. Two six right. All right. There's the glide slope. A little bit of power. We're past the threshold. Start getting ourselves aligned and transition. Power is idle. We're just going to hold it off. Hold it off. And there's the runway. Twice. That counts as two landings. We only need one more. And we're night current. That's a joke. Okay, we're on the ground. We're looking for a taxiway off to the right. It looks like this first one's closed. So it looks like we're going to want Bravo. Clean up the flaps. Okay, Bravo should be coming up here. Oh, we're crossing a freaking runway. Jesus Christ. I can't tell if we did it or not. That's crazy. That Talk about setting it up for failure there. What is going on here? Hmm, <laughs> B. I have no idea what that was about. She wants me at the northeast. Am I northeast? Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> I think she's screwing with us here. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything actually up here. Okay, there we go. That looks like a taxiway. Okay, so let's make uh let's switch over to ground. <coughs> and Long Beach ground uh, 935 Whiskey Tango is off of 26 right on Bravo like the taxi to parking. Straight ahead to parking. Thanks for the help tonight. <laughs> She's like, uh, fly a kite. <laughs> she probably sees that we busted the Bravo. I feel like we, yeah, and we almost busted it something else, right? I don't know. So in the real world, I don't fly through crazy crazy airspace like uh, like we have here in the uh, pilot edge network coverage area so this is why I signed up signed up for the pilot edge coverage area because talk about an incredible training tool to practice to make sure you're proficient for when you go out and fly stuff slightly outside of your comfort zone in the real world uh, it's just a great great tool in terms of paying for the simulator it's just you're paying for safety in, in the real world. So, uh, And then having touch screen capability on our, uh, on our G3X uh, from Crunchmeister through the, through the bezel and then through the touch screen um, from uh, GNU, uh, toast, toast GNU, right? Toast. <laughs> Let's go back to that. 
Where's my mouse? Yeah. Roast. Roast GNU. So, again, these guys, I can't thank these guys enough. The two of them, Crunchmeister and Roast GNU. Uh, I'll say those two have been the most helpful for me in terms of getting my simulator past that point of, you know, flying a computer and to the point of it's it's a truly realistic simulator to sit down and train in. So uh, thank you guys very much. I really appreciate what you guys are both doing for the community. Keep it up, Roast GNU. Appreciate the support and keep this thing uh, functioning, even though I know uh, Asobo is going to do their best to keep breaking things on you. So thank you guys very much. Uh, to anybody who watched this, I hope this video is helpful for you. Uh, if anybody decides to download this pop-out manager, um, I mean, this is huge. This is something Asobo, you know, we've been waiting two years and Asobo hasn't provided it to us yet. So uh, he has a uh, donation link here, donate on PayPal. So, um, you know, con contribute. If you use this, toss, toss some money his way because he's taking his own free time to... Uh, to not only put this thing together, but like I said, as Asobo keeps breaking things with their new sim updates, he has to keep patching it. And that's why this thread is 300 messages long because every time an update comes out, something breaks, people send him a message in this thread, he goes and fixes it, and then everybody's happy and, and working again. So uh, if you're using this, uh, tell him thanks and uh, buy, him a, buy him a coffee or a beer. So. Uh, Thanks again for joining me, uh, and we'll see you guys on the next one. See ya.